Hi everyone, last night I watched Charlotte Holcroft's video on the content creator's confession tag. I thought it was super fun and an ingenious way of answering a lot of the questions that I've been asked by you in the past all in one video. So I thought I would do my own version of it today. So the content creator's confession tag was started by Kate the Great and Better Off Red. If you haven't checked out their channels before, highly recommend that you do. I will link their videos and also Charlotte's video in the description box for you to check out a little bit later on. Once again, if you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new videos on YouTube every single week and I would absolutely love it if at some point in this video you would consider clicking on that like button, the subscribe button, and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So there are 17 questions in this video, which makes me incredibly uncomfortable. 17 is a prime number. I don't like prime numbers. I find them pretty strange. I just try and avoid them at all costs, which I know is quite bizarre in its own right, which tells you what direction this video will probably go in in the very near future. So anyway, I did consider taking a question out to make it 16, which, you know, makes my shoulders drop a bit. I know, I know. There is just no rhyme or reason for what is going round in my head right now. Let's get on. Let's get on with the video. Question one is such a good question. How do you feel about the term influencer and do you feel that you are one? Okay, so the term influencer, it makes me almost as uncomfortable as prime numbers. <laughs> I don't like it. But what actually is my job title? Because this is my full-time occupation and I still don't know what to call myself. I don't like the term influencer. I think it suggests lying and deceit and manipulation in order to persuade somebody to buy something. And that I would say absolutely no, that is not me. However, what am I though? Any suggestions in the comment section? Keep it clean, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> my job description is to share my thoughts, feelings, and experiences about a product, how they work on my skin, how they feel, how they wear, whether I like them or not. It is not my job to persuade you in either direction. It is just my job to share my thoughts and experiences. I am here to save you money and to also help you make informed decisions when purchasing, especially for high priced items, because nobody wants to go and fork out an absolute fortune on something and find out it doesn't work for them. So that's what I'm here for. So that was a really long-winded answer for a relatively straightforward question. Apologies. How do I feel about the term influencer? Really don't like it. Do I feel like I am one? No. Question two, how did you decide to become a content creator? I've covered this several times in previous videos before, so I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I was at a little bit of an impasse. Uh, Seth was diagnosed with diabetes at age three. I'd stopped work to come home and look after him because I couldn't do the role that I was doing at the time and look after him as well. He then went off to school. I found myself getting a little bit tired of only being Seth and Beatrice's mom and Wes's wife. And I felt incredibly guilty for wanting something more. So uh, my nan died at the time that this was all going off in my head and left me a little bit of money. And that money bought my camera and my ring light and my laptop. And I just started from there. It was never supposed to go anywhere. This was just just supposed to be a little bit of a hobby, which if you've seen some of my previous videos right in the way back when, I have just plucked a gray eyebrow hair out of my face. You will know that I did not take it seriously. So I hope you would agree that things have got better over time, but that's how it all started. Question three, what's your experience with knowing other content creators, good or bad? Let me tell you, I have never, ever, ever had a bad experience with another content creator. I think it is a myth that the beauty community as a whole is completely tainted with bitterness, resentment, backstabbing and bitterness 
bitchiness. Every time I've reached out to another content creator for help, guidance, support, whether that be for different cameras, different lighting ideas, content ideas, whether they want to collaborate with me, I've just always been welcomed. It's never been too much trouble for them to help me out. It's always been kind, warm-hearted. So yeah, I, I just don't know what all this nastiness is is all about because it is just not like that 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> question four, do you... four, question four. See it's the prime number at the beginning of this video that is scrambling my brain. We're on four. Four. Question four everyone. Do you accept sponsorships and how do you feel about them? Okay, way back when when I first started my channel I was adamant I wasn't going to be doing any sponsored content whatsoever because as an avid viewer of YouTube I knew what other people thought about sponsored content. Going back to question one, the whole term of being an influencer, lying, cheating, deceiving in order to influence you, manipulate you into buying a product, that's what I thought sponsored content was all about and I was not going to engulf myself in that sort of stuff, it just was not me. How However, I realised as the years have progressed that you can do sponsorships whilst telling 100% truth. As long as you are allowed to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, I don't see there being an issue with sponsored content as long as all of your subscribers understand and trust you wholeheartedly. And I feel that's the sort of relationship that we have on this channel. You know that I wouldn't lie in my normal content that I'm not getting paid for. So if you trust me in that, I would hope that you would trust me in my sponsored content as well. Sponsored content also helps me reinvest back into my channel, which will help elevate the viewing quality for all of you. The sound, the lighting, the camera quality, it's much cleaner, crisper, clearer, and it's much more lifelike as if you were sat in front of me. I'm also investing in a new beauty room, which will be much bigger. Hopefully, fingers crossed, where that building is being positioned, we will be able to have some natural lighting filming as well, which I am really excited about. So do I accept sponsored content? Yes I do but I am extremely selective. How do I feel about sponsored content? Well all in all it's for the greater good and uh, yes I will continue to be selective in my sponsored contents and carry on doing them on my channel. Question five, have you had an experience with a brand that has left a bad taste in your mouth? That's a little melodramatic but We've had little hiccups here and there. Little hiccups, shall we say. So um, there was one brand that asked that I didn't say that the video was sponsored right at the very beginning of the video. They wanted me to say it at the end of the video. I know. Obviously, I did not do that. And we were toing and froing with emails and I was just like, that is just not on. I want my subscribers to know that it is a sponsored video right at the beginning because some people don't like sponsored videos. If you don't want to watch it, then you should have the opportunity to click out if that is what you want to do. And I just thought it was really disingenuous and a little bit sneaky what they were asking me to do. So I told them so. <laughs> and that didn't go down well. <laughs> You've got to stick to your guns. There'll be so many people that would just have gone, okay, hmm, no, not happening. Question six, how do you deal with negative comments? Now I am really lucky on this channel because we have such a tight knit, close, kind community. I don't get a lot of negative comments, but um, there are those constructive criticisms, which I welcome always. But then there are those other comments that start off with, I'm not being nasty, but... Now come on Karen, if you have to say I'm not being nasty, but you know you're gonna be nasty. Just stop right there. Nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> it's just you all know it's gonna go downhill from there. <laughs> you just cannot argue with people that want to purposefully be nasty and hurt your feelings. And it's taken me a really long time to get that in my head. And it took Stephanie Marie saying to me one day, I rang her and I was really upset and I was penning a response. And I spoke to Stephanie and she just said, 
what are you doing? Why are you even considering responding to this person? It's not worth thinking about. If a comment is there specifically to upset me, it is deleted immediately and that person is blocked. And that is much, much better for my sanity. The other thing that I've found really helps my sanity is I do not look at comments just before I go to bed because there have been instances where I've seen a comment that is attacking me literally just before I put my phone down before I go to sleep and then that's it, I'm up until three o'clock in the morning steaming over Maureen who thought it was a really good idea to attack my kind, generous spirit. Big mistake, Maureen. Question seven. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve when it comes to the comments? Okay, I need to centre myself. There are a couple, you're gonna have to bear with me. So the first one, I find it really disheartening when I've spent the whole day researching a video, planning it, three hours filming the video, three hours editing the video, doing all the bump that comes with it, the thumbnail, the description box, making sure I've got links for everybody. It's a timely process to make some free content for you to watch. And the only way I get paid for making that content is by having adverts within the video, unless it's a sponsored video. And there's always a couple of people who don't wanna watch the video, but they wanna ask me a question that you can clearly find the answer to if you watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> they would just want to divert the whole process and just get the answer straight away. And I'm like, come on, Claire, trust the process. Click on the play button. <laughs> so when you respond to their comments saying you will find the answer to this in the video, they respond back saying, can't you just tell me? <laughs> no. <laughs> So I've just stopped responding to comments like that now because it just, it blows my mind. Just. My second pet peeve about the comments are those comments that expect an immediate response. And when I say immediate, I mean like pretty much immediately. I get a lot of comments on each and every video and I do try and read as many as physically possible. That used to be possible to get through 100% of them in the early days. It's just not possible now. And it's something that I had to get used to, drawing a line under a video and not responding to any of the comments anymore. That really quite upset me at first because it's one of my favorite parts of my job but a line has to be drawn somewhere. I also get a lot of comments and DMs on Instagram as well that I have to get through. So those comments that expect an immediate response really quite stress me out. And when they don't get an immediate response, this is what really irks me. They send you another comment underneath their previous comment with just with question marks as if to say, hello, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jane, it's only been 24 hours. <laughs> I was in bed, it was three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Question eight, what's your favorite part of being a content creator? There are three parts to this answer. I will try and get through them as quickly as possible. The first one, my job is incredibly flexible, very easy going, very laid back. I only have myself to answer to, which can be an issue sometimes when I'm not as self-motivated. I don't have a great HR department to give me a kick up the rear end. Secondly, I love makeup and skincare. I, I just adore them, they are my life. I think that probably oozes through the screen at you, my level of love for both makeup and skincare. So to be able to play around with those products all day, every day is just a dream come true. And three, just all of you. I love the Pampered Wolf Pack. You are my family. You are amazing. You have given me so much love and support ever since day one. And I 100% appreciate you from the bottom of my soul. And I don't think I would be doing this job anymore had it not been for all of you. One, 
nobody would watch my videos. That would be an issue. But two, just the community that we have here on the Pampered Wolf channel is just so fantastic. It's just something that I cherish. Question nine, what's your least favourite part of being a content creator? This is the easiest answer that I think I'm going to give in this entire video. Contract negotiations for sponsorships, they just blow my mind. The legal jargon that's in there, I do not have a legal brain. It's baffling to me. It's long-winded. It's lengthy. It just takes up so much time and effort. It is a full-time job in itself and often those contracts actually don't come to fruition because the brands won't allow me to do certain things that I expect when I'm taking on a sponsorship. So it's, it's, it's a long day when I'm doing contract negotiations and I don't enjoy any of it. Question 10. We are getting through these questions. Do you edit your own content and do you enjoy it? This is another thing that I don't enjoy to the best of its ability. Um, I know it comes part and parcel with the job. I love filming. I love speaking to all of you, but the editing process, especially if I film so many videos in a day, can be soul destroying. So recently you will have seen that the standard of my finished edit is much better than it used to be. It used to be very static, no movement and uh, yeah I've recently taken on an editor who is doing an amazing job with my videos. It does still mean that I do have to edit to a certain degree. I have to do a rough edit so I cut all the footage down because sometimes there can be a lot of footage. Sometimes three and a half hours worth of footage goes into making a video that can sometimes be only 10 minutes. <laughs> so I cut it all down to where it needs to be and then my editor takes over and she is amazing and I feel like she's got me. She's got the sort of vibe of this channel which is quite playful and fun and kind and warm and uh, I just feel like she's grasped that with both hands. Have you noticed? Do you like the new edits better than the old ones? Let me know. Let me know what you think. Question 11. Interesting one. Where do you draw the line when it comes to sharing on social media? Hmm. Okay, so I do have my kids on my channel from time to time. However, you will have noticed they've not appeared on my channel recently. I am a little bit more cautious about what we do and don't do because even though they want to do it now in two years time, are they going to look back on that video and think, hmm, really wish we'd not done that and it's all out in the universe now so it can't be taken back in. So I am a little bit more cautious with that now. Also, you don't know my surname. I am quite finicky about that. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm sure it will go out there eventually, but at the moment I'm quite happy being Gemma from Pampered Wolf. Um, you also will never see exactly where I live or where I am at that one given moment, just for fear that one day somebody's gonna knock on my door. And that's just not on. No. <laughs> Question 12. Name one thing you wish you had known when you were first starting out. This is, again, an easy answer. I would go back in time and tell myself that it is okay to be negative about a product because when I first started, I didn't quite know what lane I was supposed to be in. YouTube at the time was a very positive place and once I felt more comfortable to be negative, I felt my shoulders drop, I sank into the role, it was much more comfortable, I'd found the place that I needed to be, I'd found my people. It still took me a long time to feel 100% comfortable about being negative in my faves and fails videos. I often rush through my fails to finish off with my favourites, which was my happy place. Actually now, after receiving all of your feedback, I now know how important that fails section actually is because some of the things that are failures to me are positives to somebody else. And also, if a product doesn't 100% work for me, that will help to prevent you from spending money unnecessarily on something that might not work for you. So I would definitely go back in time and say, actually, negatives aren't always negative. Most of the time, they're also positive. Question 13. Is there any change you'd like to make to your content in the future? 
This I'm not quite sure about. I know I'm going to be in a different place in a year's time because this room is going to be a bit of my bathroom. <laughs> so I'm actually probably sat in my shower as we speak. But uh, as far as content goes, I'm guided by your comments and what you say you would like to see more of in the future. So I know last year you said you wanted more skincare content and I've tried to provide that and it's been well received. Also more affordable stuff. I love reviewing affordable makeup and skincare on my channel. Unfortunately in the UK we don't get a lot of new releases. It's slightly more difficult for me to cover an equal balance of affordable versus luxury but I am doing my best. So I would like to do more affordable stuff especially on the skincare line because I think everybody deserves to have a really good skincare routine regardless of budget. So uh, yeah, I hope to do more skincare in the near future but I'm really not quite sure. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. Question 14, what company collab is your dream? I thought I knew what my answer was gonna be and now I'm sort of thinking, oh, is that really what I want? I don't know. I very rarely allow myself to think about this sort of stuff because it's so far in the distance. I mean, they don't even know I exist, but I would love my own skincare brand or line or collaboration with, say, Desiem. If Desiem approached me, I would think all my Christmases had come at once. Medicate, Paula's Choice, just wow. Um, yeah, that would be the dream. With makeup, I just, I, I adore Lancome, Pat McGrath, Dior, Chanel, Givenchy. I mean, the list is endless. However, I would also love to bring out a selection of really beautiful blushes. You all know I'm a bit of a blush freak. With some brand like e.l.f. or Revolution that is seriously affordable. So if we could really elevate the quality of the blushes to high-end standard and I could put my name on that, I would be just over the moon. Question 15, what other creator do you admire or want to work with? Again, so many, really so many. I adore Sam and Nick from Pixie Woo. They don't really do a lot of this stuff anymore, but I just think they are so real, so relatable, and also stunningly beautiful to boot. So I would love to work with them. Angie from Hot and Flashy, she is one of my idols. Me and my mum named her Our Ange. Um, where I'm from in Yorkshire, if you put Our on the front of a name, it just, it's, it's one of those things, it's like they're a member of the family. So our Ange, it's a loving term. I really respect her. I think she puts a lot of blood, sweat, tears and effort into her channel. And uh, I respect what she says. I think she's very good at what she does. And I think she's adorable to boot. So that would be my two dream collaborations. Actually, I think that's three, but who's counting? Question 16, what kind of content do you hate? Hate is such a strong word, but I feel it's valid for this question. And it's a very easy answer. There are two little things I want to say about this. The first thing that I really don't like are kids opening their birthday presents or Christmas presents on YouTube. Honestly, there was one year when my kids had just finished opening their presents and instead of playing with their own presents, they watched other children open their Christmas presents and play with their Christmas presents on YouTube. Just, what? Really? Uh? The second thing that I really don't like are those grown adults that have massive houses, that do stupid challenges, like they have a slip and slide and instead of it now being acceptable for my children to have a slip and slide in the garden, no, 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 that's not right anymore. You have to cover the slip and slide with trifle and more jelly and whipped cream and just make a mess. No, that is not what normal people do in this world. There's a third one. 
There's a third, the stuff where they give away lots of money and it's just show off people that just want everyone to know how much money they've got. So they get people to do ridiculous, humiliating things on YouTube in order to get some money or a gift at the end of it. I. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. Question 17, the final question. Have you ever had to deal with cancel culture? The short answer is no. However, I have had a few people announce that they are unsubscribing, which I always find a little bemusing. Like, why are you announcing that you're leaving? I don't mind at all. People grow apart, you know, we do things, some things you don't like, some things you do like. If there's a lot of things that you don't like that run concurrently, you, you just think this person's not for me anymore and that is completely fine, but you don't need to announce it. Will I deal with cancel culture in the future? It's perfectly possible. I mean, I just think people are too quick to make assumptions without having all the facts and, Something that is the truth can be manipulated and spun out of context and be made to look really, really bad. Um, are you gonna find anything that can be spun into inappropriate land? Probably. We've all done stupid stuff in our lives, but deep down now I live my life trying to be kind and courteous and treating others how I would like them to treat my children, my husband, my mum, my dad and the rest of my family and myself. And by doing that, I'm just hoping that people will overlook all the stupid stuff that I did when I was younger and didn't know better. We can but hope. So that's it for this video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I just want to thank Charlotte Holcroft again for bringing this tag to my attention because I had no idea it was out there in the atmosphere and I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Don't forget to go and check out Charlotte's video, also Kate the Great's video and also Better Off Red's video as well. I will link all of those in the description box and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.